The following is a presentation of TFNN. Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, host of the Tiger Technicians Hour, 877-927-6648. Let me just give my uh, uh, monologue first, and then we can take calls a little later on. I might want to have the full half hour, and then the second half hour, I'll take the calls. I'll tell you why. There's a lot to do. I've got my webinar coming up uh, this coming Wednesday at 5 o'clock. It's called The Tide. Let me explain something. Uh, I wasn't going to do this, but it's right in front of me. If something's right in front of me, I tend to uh, focus on it. So I'll zip, drag it across. There's a chart that I have here on the left side. There's a chart I have here on the right side. This is the Dow monthly chart. And my contention has been for a long time, since I put in a little after I noticed this question mark, I put in this question mark to say, are we here and it was somewhere inside there that I was discussing it. And I was looking at this and saying there is very much a parallel to the technicals, the price movement, just so many things of this left side chart that is matching the right side chart. Look at, the, look at this. I especially kept it. You can see it nicely. Yep, this looks great in Tiger TV. You can see, I wish I could use the black, and, the black background all the time, but I know that people like to print out my charts for my subscribers. I decided many years ago that I'd use the white chart background because people kept saying when we print, it's just yeah, black is impossible to print. I agree. I mean, can you imagine how much ink you'd use just in one or two of these? Um, so, okay, let's get to it. So the chart on the right, and I discussed this in my webinar, my last webinar, I showed it in the webinar maybe six months ago, maybe it was more than six months ago, and I said, this is for me something that I'm looking at. There's a, there's a completely different ratio, it's a whole bunch of things, and this is the move down that we're looking at right now. This is not current, this is uh, from about a week or so ago, uh, from when I did uh, when did I show it? I showed it about a week or so ago. Yeah, last weekend. And I put the up arrow and I said, is this the move down? That's the final move before a really major upside uh, um, rally. One of the reasons why Monday morning, after my work over the weekend, last weekend, why Monday morning, we went to a buy signal um, in the Dow, actually two times long the Dow. We had been short. We aren't short anymore. The Dow all the way from the day before the most recent high of the 23rd of uh, April. We got short in the 26,500s. The high was 26,695. And we took profits on the way down, got stopped out of that position, the very last position for about an eight or nine point profit on that last position uh, yesterday. And of course, since Monday, we've been long, and that's been a spectacular move going from the vehicle that we have, around about 74, uh, 40s or 50s, uh, to the high today of in the 76 something. I mean, this is, I'm sorry, I said 74. I'm looking at the wrong index. Uh, let me just do this one more time. Let me just type it in over here. Uh, going from the uh, from the 70, sorry, I said 70. I should have said uh, we are long from Monday morning at um, in the, this particular vehicle at 42.32. And we've taken just a little profit, just a little small profit off yesterday got stopped out for a raise stop on a little, just a small portion. And um, it hit, it, it hit 46, um, 46.70s or 80s this morning. I mean, that's a really good move for a 200% two, a long position. And you remember, the, I'll talk about other things as we move on. But what I want you to say is, you see, you see this red and yellow line, these red and yellow lines, that's the, the MACD, the Moving Average Convergence Divergence. I mean, we talk about that on... Um, Wednesday night in my webinar. And you see the lower one is the slow stochastic. You see this move up here. You see this red resistance line from that low. You see this gray support line, uh, up channel, beautiful up channel. You see this light blue oval pattern. Well, look at this long-term uptrend line, hits it exactly, pulls back. Look at this uptrend right here in, a, in, a, in an up channel. There's nothing fancy. This is an exact percentage gain 
uh, incremental move to the upside in this diagonal trend line, and it hit us exactly, and we've rallied. And now we've pulled back sharp up until last week on Friday when I did the chart at the end of Friday for, for, for the Saturday close. And look what's happened. Now we've had a really good rally. So my big question is, is this up arrow, are we in this phase here that says we've made the December is the low, oh, sorry, is a low, and now we're waiting for the low, which is the residual. So there's, you get an earthquake and then you get the aftershock. I call that internal low and residual low. The residual low, like an aftershock, can sometimes be worse than the earthquake, like it was for the for the S and P, I believe it was in 2002 in October, and then I think it was March at the lows when others were testing the low. Um, the S and P made a lower low. The Dow, I think, made a higher low with the S M H or something like that. So you get this six-month difference. We've just had a December low and a retest of the low. So this is going to be very interesting because if we have now started the next move up. The big question is, if we take out the all-time high, is that the start of an accelerated move to the upside? Well, we've got tariffs. We've got the Fed lowering rates because, or thinking about lowering rates, because why? Because the economy is mixed. You've got some reports say things are really strong. You've got quite a few extra reports coming in over the last few weeks that are saying, no, 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 no. Things are not that great. There are other, there are, some things are, are, are just not flying. I mean, the retail sector is really mixed with some really negative things going on. Even the XLK, even the uh, FANG stocks have had this huge digestive phase I've been discussing since um, this last summer. I've been talking about a digestive phase, big digestive phase with a hat trick top in the ha in the monthly charts, weekly charts, and starting with the daily charts of the FANG stocks: Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google Alphabet. So um, now the question is: If we're matching this particular chart right now, the low that we made on Monday, where at the open on Tuesday uh, for Tuesday's newsletter, my opening call newsletter, which you'd be able to, if you if you subscribe to my newsletter, it's a money back guarantee, 30 days. Hey, it's not that you'll be here for my webinar coming Wednesday night. I think it's one of the important webinars in the big picture that I've had in quite a while, as well as a very important one because I'm going to be showing you some techniques you can use in intraday trading and use any time you want. So, with that said. We have run up to a high and pulled back. You see this left side chart? Well, in the down, we ran up to the high. I drew this dashed line, and we came back quite sharply. Look at the MACD. It's still negative in this particular one right now. And the stochastic has matched with that W formation at the bottom so well. That makes us really important. So on Tuesday morning, I said, finally, for the first time, we've been waiting and waiting for it. I said, this is where I'm going to advise subscribers who are looking for the big picture. What do, we, what do you want to do? Now is the time, I said, to add to the, your long-term, like the Dow type um, funds or that type of uh, ETF, that type of amalgamation of really good sec a sector composite. And that, that's what we did on Monday. So um, with that said, I'll be back in a few minutes and we're going to get to the real-time charts. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the TAS Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the TAS Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the TAS Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, this is Technical Friday. Let me just show you a couple of technical. If you see this rally here from this long-legged doji right here at the 24,680 level in the Dow, uh, that was the uh, 3rd of June, yep, 3rd of June. I may as well put the date in because I'm liable to use references a lot. So that's 6 3 um, There were a couple of things going on. In the, the, the way I'm using the Chapman Wave 5 method, I, I'd shown subscribers that we probably made it 4, and this accelerated move down. I have, a, I have now a slightly different way of using this because a five would automatically get you a, to a leg C or a peak C or a trough C because the Chapman wave is made up of at least seven waves to get a buy mode uh, on the upside. That takes you to a D. And then the leg eight down is where it makes a peak D. So I've been working with this for quite a while and it's really been helpful in short term trading and all that stuff. But most importantly, I found that there's a particular technique that I use that eliminates that artificial, it's what I call a little coda phase. You go to a C and it's more like a, uh, it hasn't quite completed. It needs one more move down. And then what does that mean? So I use this X, but that is really just part of the parcel of the Chapman Wave methodology. Most importantly, you can see on the right, the 120 minute chart had this huge cluster of Chapman Wave automated support levels. That was a good sign, number one. Number two is, in the TL, in the, sorry, in the DOG, look, the DOG is the one-to-one -one inverted uh, DIA diamonds, that's the Dow diamonds, one-to-one uh, -one trading long side, and D, uh, the G, DOG is the short side. I had gotten to a leg E, a peak E, and I was anticipating there was a chance that we could go to the E above the 200-period moving average, making this 200-period moving average of 56.68, Really important support. So we went short the day before the t the the, um, uh, the high in the Dow, this last high, and it squeaked a little higher, and then it started to come down sharply. So that's the DOG at 57.79. The third, it makes a reversal with a Doji candle at a peak at a potential peak F top. So all of this was confirmed that that should at least be a shorter term top. If you go to the and the question I've had. Um, just a couple of people that most most of my subscribers understand how I go step by step by step. That's what happened when we got that buy signal on uh, the March the sixth, 
in the diamonds, exactly this inverse of the DOG and the DIA, um, and we went long at the exact bottom of 2009. On the Friday, it was the Monday that the S&P uh, gave its, its low. And what I did that day is I had a very wide stop, and I said, technically, you should, even if this is a decent rally, you should get some kind of a, a retracement for a test. This is the normal thing. If there's a V pattern, the reason why I wanted to have a, a wide stop initially is that if there's a V pattern, you just go straight up, not you, the price goes straight up and never comes down because it creates a, a flagpole pattern that creates a high level consolidation with a little mini flag having a consolidation and then going even higher. But when it starts to have much smaller candles and it makes the arch formation, that means be careful, you're coming in for a retest not of necessarily of the low, but towards the low. I call that the internal low and the residual low. So the question is, is this the low? Now, someone said, um, uh, let's see. For your information, if this turns out to be a V-shaped recovery on the daily and weekly, there's no way you can take credit for calling it out. It would be pure luck. Having said that, it's a very good thing. We're in the, D, the, the two times long trade. So that's just, this is complimenting with faint praise or, or what is it? It's a, a backhanded compliment. No, I have said I'm a mega bull. I've said that for years now. That does not mean to say that in the shorter to even intermediate term, I'm not looking for big corrections. I am looking at a minimum of the 27,000s in this very silent, quiet, mega bull market. We've been looking to get back into the long side in a good way. All the positions since December, I've had no stock shorts, only ETF shorts. Why? Because within the context of what we're looking at right now, if you look at the TLT, what have I typed in the TLT? I've typed in Low rates force TINA, T-I-N-A. There is no alternative. Look, even with the TLT up $1.11 at 131.72, where technically you should be getting money flowing out of the volatility of stocks into the security of bonds. Uh-uh. Look what's happening. Bonds are, are being favored right now. But wait a minute. So is the Dow up 284, the S&P up 33 at 28.77, the QQQ up 3.59, up 2.02%, even more than the others, finally catching up at 181.19, the NYA, the New York Stock Exchange, up huge, up 106 points at 12,783. The IWM, in its own way, is trying its best to rally, but is failing because the small caps are not in favor right now. The IYC, which is the iShares U.S. Consumer Services ETF, really nice, broken out of the Chapman Wave uh, falling axe formation. So what am I going to be talking about on Wednesday, I'm going to be showing you some techniques that we've been using that have really helped technically to uh, to be able to get the positions, to place the stops, even for the ones we've missed. It's been helping us at least identify, talk about ones we've missed. I, for over a week, I've been showing this particular uh, chart, star, I star, uh, ink. It does uh, something very interesting, if I can just find it. It does... Uh, unlocking value in property leases. And right here, I showed it, I, I mentioned it and showed it at $9.50, 55 cents, I think it was, right here on the, I think it was the 24th of May. I said, it's just a little difficult to get into. I recognize this particular pattern, the MACD strong, stochastic strong. Uh, we'll try to get in on a dip for this uh, peak right here for maybe a peak C, it was a leg C. Well, you know what? It went up. In fact, since it made a low right here on the 20th of May at 8.63, it's had one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven green bars. It is only today about to make probably a peak C at twelve dollars and six cents. I know this pattern is a pattern that I talk about often enough, but it's really tough to get in. I, I should have just grabbed it any one of the days this entire week and just said, we're going to grab it here, a smaller position than we want, because this is that rocket ship. Now it's in for a rest and it should make a nominal D and then take a big breather. So these patterns repeat over and over again. Why did I mention it? Because within the context of what I was looking at, let me go back here. Oh, oh we've got a break coming up. Let me just go back to the Dow to say that we are in and we, I've recommended a much uh, a longer bull position because we wanted to get in with a good cushion if there is a spike to the upside and then we will handle the trade. But everything is pointing so far to the low that was made on Monday it's been a pretty good low. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger to News this hour. Basil, Basil Chapman has a special subscriber webinar coming up Wednesday, June 12th at 5 p.m. called The Tide. In this webinar, Basil will be demonstrating techniques that can help one identify whether the tide is coming in or going out. That is, whether a trend is bullish or bearish in a variety of time frames. And Basil will be speaking specifically to indices, currencies, commodities, interest rates, and key stocks. The technical tools that Basil will be discussing are available on almost all software packages that will be shown in historical context as well as live for current market setups. Identifying the key trend allows one to trade with the tide rather than against it. Subscribers also gain immediate access to three archived workshops so you can get started right away when you sign up. For all the details on the opening call and Basil's upcoming subscriber webinar, The Tide, this coming Wednesday, visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks, we're back. I think we got the sound. Just there was a moment, momentary blip there. Okay, this is the RTY, a nice cup formation with two minutes and a five minute made uh, peak Ds right there. So did the E mini ESM19. But the five minutes, so 10 minutes made peak C's. And that says to me, wow, that's really interesting because I'm going to jump around a little bit if you don't mind. It's just, uh, that's the way I have to look at it today. See, there's a potential peak C in the week, in the 120 minute Dow chart. Hank is terribly strong, not terribly strong, very strong. Stochastic still at 95%. That's really good support. 
And even though for my subscribers yesterday and today, I said I'm anticipating some kind of weakness. Yesterday, we got a very short-term weakness, and then there was just buying all day. Today, we saw early weakness. We saw the market after the Fed announcement. No, after the jobs report at 8.30, there was a sharp pullback to negative, and then all of a sudden, everything gets bought again. That's because the Fed, I mean, the Fed is really important at this particular a moment, only in that if they keep lowering rates, it makes it, there is no other alternative. That's really the issue. That's not to say the stock market is the best thing out there. It's just that what else are people supposed to do? So that's this 120-minute chart, just like the 10-minute chart, has a chance to make a leg D. And this one should see the stochastic pullback a little bit here as the MACD, MACD, the, the MACD's fast-moving average, the green line differential, 9 period differential, and the histogram still very strong, says, you know what, we could still make a D, maybe even today, Friday, then maybe on the weekend, or maybe a pop-up on Monday, and then there's a bit of a rest. I'm anticipating we will get some kind of rest, but the greater the single leg A up goes, the greater we have to analyze the chance of a single leg A failure mode, that's the Chapman Wave methodology, where you pull back more than 50%, and that says, uh-oh, false move to the upside. I don't see that right now. I think the way we've broken out of all the resistance in the 25,900s today is really important and suggesting, yes, the daily, this is the 120-minute chart. 120-minute chart is uh, still uh, has, I say, a leg D. The daily chart has 26,157 as Chapman Wave automated projection uh, resistance. So I am expecting we're getting close to some kind of a, some kind of at least a shorter term pullback. But so far the action's really been good, but it's actually quite selective in many areas. All right. So that's that. Now the question about is this a longer term buy signal that's going to the all time high regardless of what happens? You know what? For anyone to say yes that it is, it means that you are you are anticipating that your proclamation is such with has such credence that regardless of all market conditions we're just going to go higher and higher and higher and i'm saying i don't think that that is we're there yet to start that kind of move if you look at the smhs the smhs yes they've done exactly what we were looking at for the um for that leg d and the options play that we were talking about for the person uh, who kept asking me about this, and I said, yep, as an options play, if you want to trade it, it could go to a leg D uh, in the 120-minute chart, but once it breaks above 100, what was that, 103.26 or something, 103.28, um, you've got to start taking off some of those option calls, Well, now you must have made a lot of money, you must have been doing very well, but it's also telling me that because the MACD has finally crossed positive in the daily chart, I can finally say, now, um, and let me just double check here because in our SMHs we are still short, and um, now we're not even close to being stopped out of that position. Uh, we've taken profits on the way down. We've got a little bit left, um, and I'm giving it a little bit wider berth because there's a chance I might want to look at this as a, a reshort on the on the SOX index, but I just don't know yet because that weekly chart has a lot of work to do to get to 105.69 the nine, period, 9 and 14 period moving averages. That's going to be a big clue for me because finally when the, when the semiconductors, the SMHs, really kick in, I think that's going to be the move. And that will go together. I'm just getting out. Now I'm guessing. But that's going to probably go together with the XLF, which is holding really nicely at 27.18. It's not really participating, but actually with TLT up so sharply, with the TX, TNX, look at this, the TNX, uh, T and X dot X. Uh, the 10 year yield at, at a low. Look at this. Talk about that A pattern, the Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down. Look at that move. Uh, the, the most important support now is the low from 2017 in September, where it was 20.34 in the yield, and today's low is 20.53. We're almost there. That is quite incredible. So, yes, we've been this low in yields before. It is important. It is part of the big picture, the Japanization of our bond yields. Leg D down in the weekly chart, leg C in the monthly chart. Okay, 
Now I just want to show you the dollar. We got a sell signal that's your sell mode in the daily dollar. We've got a sell signal, perhaps a sell mode. I'll know by this afternoon, do my work over the weekend. In the weekly chart, the monthly chart is still very strong, but this is not a very pleasant looking red candle, but the technicals are still very strong in the monthly. I still believe that the longer term for the dollar is going to be up. Now, that doesn't mean to say that gold, which is in leg, gold, which is in leg right at this particular moment in the daily, it's in leg D, having hit a high of 1352.7 on the continuous contract. The MACD is very strong. Stochastic's flat at 87%. I would prefer to see it at 93%, but 87 is very good. And you've got a cup formation forming in the weekly, and that says gold is in play, and that there should be a higher leg C in the week in the monthly chart above the continuous contract high of February of last of last year, uh, February of 2019, this year uh, of 1361.6. Okay, that's that's important. The next thing I wanted to say is that silver is playing catch up. And finally, with a really good leg B candle in the daily way above this down channel, way above the weekly 14 and 9 period resistance, first time that you've seen something like this, it's in play. So I'm saying that the dollar is going to probably be weaker. The euro is going to be stronger in this particular phase. We'll talk about it a lot more on Wednesday night. But the EUR USD is in leg B, very strong leg B, broken finally. I didn't think it would happen so soon, but it's broken above. It hasn't closed above. We'll see it today. I think it will close in leg B above the down channel, very long-term down channel, the green line, and it's headed towards 1.137, the 200-period exponential moving average of the daily, 1.133. So that's good. And let's just see. I bet that the yen is breaking down right now. USDJPY, I don't have looked at it today. Yep. No, I wouldn't say it's breaking down. It's just kind of weak. At 108.10, down 29 cents. That's, uh, that is, as I said last week, it's made a peak D in the weekly chart. It's in a down mode in an arch formation. So uh, nothing to see, uh, folks. There And, and high-grade copper is not doing very well at all. High-grade copper is down at 2.62. It should be rallying here, but it's not. But wood which is the ICES Timber and Forestry ETF, is having a little bit of a, a bounce. And yesterday I was talking to, was it Mike? We were looking at the uh, crude oil, and I, XLE, I'm sorry, the XLE crude oil is up $1.18. It's in a leg A. Nothing great, but it is trying to move up. And the XLE did have a nice rally at the end of the day yesterday. And today it's up a little bit more. I just don't see anything spectacular just yet. But it's a nice start to trying to have a rally. I'll be right back. That was up 279. Basil Chapman, don't forget my webinar. I'll talk a little more about it coming up Wednesday at 5 o'clock. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. What would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South 
African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. The index up 27. The Dow is up almost 300 points. The S&P is up almost 35 points. The volatility index is up 27. Says it says up 1.63 percent, and the S&P is only up 1.24 percent. It's at 16.19. So someone's very nervous right here. They're buying insurance. That to me is is a good sign. But at the same time, it means that the weekly chart is going to close above. At this point, it looks like it will close above the 14-period uh, exponential moving average and the 200-period moving average in the low 15s. So um, that's going to be very interesting because it gives a little bit of a cushion uh, for the market, uh, saying that there's a little bit too much uh, pessimism, uh, pessimism still out there. Not the point. The point is, let me make it clear, in the 15s and 16s, that's usually saying that you should get some kind of a pullback, and it's not saying it right now. It means that the people that are buying this at this particular moment must be putting in some pretty big trades because to hold here without sliding, um, you need some conviction. So I'm looking at this in the, in the sense that it's just numbers. If at any point next week the VIX actually does start to climb into the 17s, that's where you'll get some, somewhat of a pullback. I don't know if it's those triple-digit pullbacks right now because the market is saying because there's no else to go, we're finding places in different sectors in this rotational buy where look at Triple M, looking just terrible the other day, had a really good percentage rally. It goes from 159.32 on the 3rd to today's high of 166.68. That's that's 13 points. Oh, but wait a minute, 13 points. Look at the chart pattern. It was at 220 uh, in um, in May. In May, or May, oh no, April the 24th, it was 219.75. So even these rallies are not really counting in the big guys. Look at the UTX chart formation. UTX up nicely, but nothing. It's not, it doesn't even look like the Dow chart right now. Um, this is just a very small move up 72 cents. And that's the reason why I'm saying not all the little ducks are in order for me to say that the V-shaped pattern that I'm anticipating at the end today at today's close, having gone above the left side high in the in the Dow, SPX.x, having not yet gone above the left side high of uh 29.92.15 from the 5th, 16th of May in the S&P. And the QQQ, not even close to getting above that high that was made. Uh, oh, you can't even go that far back over the 16th at 186. You have to go to the gap down high of 182, and it's at 181.25. So it's still fighting. Um, so that's the reason. Uh, two things two things that are really important to me, and just purely coincidentally, someone just mentioned the, this morning 
uh, asked me about the IYT, and right now I'm getting a, um, um, a message about the IYT, because that, as you know, I like to look at these all th these things going together. The IYT is up 2.09 at 183.99. This is not good action, and that's the, the there are three big reasons why I'm not saying right now that the low that we just saw on Monday is the low that we're going to really scream. What I am looking at is that there's a chance that when the next bad news events come in, my key will be, are we getting the unison move in crude oil and the transports to the upside? With the Dow and the S&P and the Qs and all the others moving together, or am I still in this disparity area? Am I still looking at an Amazon which should be on fire? It should be up near the all-time highs of 2050. It's at 1800 right now. It's 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 just as this is just a real nice rally, but it's nothing special. Look at the weekly chart. So in that, uh, Basil, do you think all made a short-term top? Okay, let me do three things of the, uh, right now that are important. IWT, and XAL is what I want you to look at. The XAL is the airline index. It's gone right to the 200 period exponential moving average. It's just in a, it's in a, a sine wave move around the 200 period moving average of 99.31 right here in the weekly. It's got this up and down and up and down. It's actually making um, a narrowing triangle. Look at this triangle. It's one of my least, together with the head and shoulders pattern, it's one of my least favorites because, sure, it's going to go either to the upside or the downside. But what happens is it can make smaller and smaller ranges as it gets to the apex. And as it stands right now, it's had a nice move up after a lousy week last week. So the XA is, is lagging tremendously. The IYT overall is lagging tremendously. The, um, the crude oil, which, as I say, I, I like it when it's rallying, is lagging not just tremendously, it is really failing right now. So when I put it together on a 120-minute chart, let me just do that because the question Ruby asked was, is a crude oil making some kind of a top? This is peak A, B, C, D, E. You know, I... Let me just show you this. When you fill in a very sharp decline and you go above it in the rectangle formation, I'm usually impressed and it says that the breakout level is now your key support. So what I'm going to say at 53.73, if crude oil takes out 53.38, closes under that by Monday at this time, then I'm going to say to you, yes, a little a short term, a short term top. But uh, playing on the 120-minute chart <clears throat> at this particular point, I still see enough strength to say that it should hold the 5320s into Monday, maybe even Tuesday. <laughs> so I hope that helps a little bit. So um, yeah, so I don't want to I don't want to get too far away from what I was talking about before. I was looking at different stocks in different sectors. If you look at the RTH, and this is the way I want to look at the big picture, really nice move up, $1.56 in the, uh, is this called still called the market vectors? No, the Van Eck vectors retail index, strong leg A, good, we're at the high of the day, 105.53. Um, the, the high that was made just in October of 112.23 comes down to the December low of 87.11. That's a pretty big move, but look at the nice move up. And in the arch formation, and I'll be talking about this, the patterns I'm talking about uh, on my webinar on Wednesday night will be just like this. What's the difference between an arch formation that is breaking down and an arch formation that holds support and says, uh-uh, be careful because there could be another arch formation that could be forming very soon. So I'll be talking about that. And a lot has to do with how the MACD and Stochastic Act, as well as certain moving averages. So far, the RTH is still looking good, and that's important. So the X, RTH, what was the um, S&P? Oh, I, just off the top of my head, XL, no, uh, I can't remember it. Uh, what is the S&P retail? Uh, someone, if so, somebody knows it, that's great. Okay, so within that context, right now, this move up, 1,300, 1,400 points from Monday's low in the Dow. XRT, thank you very much, uh, Dave. XRT, um, look at that H pattern. They're, they're XRT, no, this is CRT. Cross Timbers Royalty Trust, don't buy that. 
XRT. Oh my, XRT, they are different. They have different compilations. Um, those components are very different. The XRT is looking terrible. The RTH is looking way better. And I think that's because it has Amazon. I'll be back, Basil Chap and Titan Nations. Our last segment coming up, up 293 in the S in the Dow. Hmm, very nice action coming on. Ah, we will look at the uh, 10 minutes in the e e mini in a moment. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So uh, go to the front page of TFNN if you're interested in my newsletter, the opening call. Um, I've got uh, for anyone, uh, this is for subscribers, my Wednesday um, six, 5 o'clock to 6 30. A webinar is going to be discussing certain techniques that can really help you in identifying the tide. Uh, most importantly, I'm going to be talking also about certain sectors, certain stocks, certain things that what we always do in my newsletter is we, we start looking for the next three months or whatever it is at, at particular sectors that we really want to own, that we're looking to own, that we want to have part of our portfolio. We've already been doing that. I spoke about this the other day. I really don't like, but how else would you know what I, what we're doing here? The PLD trade, you remember we were talking about it on air the other day, has gone from our entry point at 75.14. Uh, 75 that was on the 4th. And today's trading at 78.58, having hit 78.89, gone to a new all-time high leg D in the monthly, leg D, Doji candle right here. It's getting a little tired in the 120 minute chart, new leg D in the weekly chart. That's what we were looking for. That's the technique that helped us get it. And uh, so these are the techniques that we use. Um, most importantly, um, I can't talk about all of them right here. 
what we have, what we haven't. I give lessons. I give uh, what, what we've done wrong, what I'd like to improve for the next time. It's really going to be very informative for this particular webinar and timely because mid-June is exactly where different things happen in the market. We saw the dollar start to break down for the first time. Um, with a sell signal in the in the in the weekly chart, and look what's happened to uh, gold. It's really moving nicely. So those are those are the things that we'll be dealing with. Just real quickly, I did I, I mentioned yesterday. I think I mentioned it. I know for subscribers, I did. Beyond, uh, which is beyond uh, meat, is something that we wanted to trade. We didn't trade it. It's my fault. I wanted to trade it for a peak D. It made the peak D the other day. Yesterday, news comes out. I've actually tried this stuff uh, at. Uh, um, whole foods, something like it. Uh, yeah, it tastes for the way I eat food. It could disguise it very well and eat it, but it's kind of expensive. I think it's a sexy play. I think it's in play if you want to really make money on a short-term basis as trading. Put this on your list. It's going to be a real winner, up and down and up and down. So that's what we'll end with. I'll be back with Tom a little later on. Stay tuned for Steve, Dave, and Tom. And otherwise, check out my opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN. And for the weekend, hope you have a wonderful weekend. And I'll be sending out traffic.